Hi, welcome to Stream Infused Literacy. I'm Stephanie Horgan, Assistant Principal of All Saints Catholic School in Manassas, Virginia. And I'm Kayla Dellinger, the Technology Coordinator at the Franciscan School in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're really happy that you can be joining us to discuss this topic today. Kayla and I have a passion for integrating technology into the classroom, and we're excited to share with you projects and ideas for cross-curricular experiences for the students. So let's begin by talking about what is STREAM. When we discuss STREAM, we're talking about science, technology, religion, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Traditionally, you may have heard the R in STREAM become robotics, uh, but because we have a unique experience with Catholic education, we took this opportunity to talk about integrating and infusing religion into the curriculum. By introducing STREAM, we are bringing together the students through a cross-curricular experience and allowing them to have unique uh, opportunities for exploring their learning. So why STREAM? So we're talking about STREAM with the three C's, collaborate, communicate, and create. Cross-curricular work allows for students to show what they know in unique and different experiences. It's important for students who are both asynchronous and synchronous learners in person or virtual to be able to use their knowledge across the curriculum. Uh, we find ourselves sometimes crunched for time in these days and making sure that we're covering all the parts of the curriculum. With stream infused literacy, you can have the opportunity as an educator to work with your peers, your other teachers, and your specialists to create unique opportunities for students to learn within the uh, time crunch that you have and, and you can make sure that you're covering all areas of the curriculum. It's project-based and learner-focused, which is so important with the students these days and age. Uh, we allow for alternative assessments. Not every student learns best with a paper and pencil test. It's very important that they can show what they know in a unique uh, in different, way, different ways of learning. It's also interesting because these types of uh, assessments can be adapted for various grade levels. Just because um, with reading and, and learning, it doesn't mean that uh, if you're using a picture book with a classroom, it doesn't have to be a kindergarten or first grade classroom. Students who are older enjoy listening to these stories and pulling the moral and the tale of the story from uh, the, the picture books. And everybody loves to hear a, a good story. Um, and also it allows for multiple grade levels to work with one another. I think we find in education these days that students are lacking that uh, in, uh, that integration with one another, that, that uh, opportunity to talk and learn from one another. So it, it creates unique opportunities for students who are in fifth grade to show what they know to first grade students as well. All right, so let's break it down a little bit into some of the themes that we might see in each of these subject areas. So for science, we might be talking about living systems, chemistry, matter, weather, biology, solar system, or ecosystems. And like Stephanie was saying, those things are, um, they're there in different grade levels. So third grade learns about solar systems, sixth grade learns about solar systems. So you can adapt to whatever grade level you're teaching. In technology, we'll focus on research, resources, and the most important part is student creation. Um, because that's when they become the most engaged. Religion, of course, with our Catholic schools, we want to make sure that it's integrated into all of the subject areas, and that's unique to us. And we also want to pull in some of those Catholic social teaching principles to think about um, service projects and things like that that we can introduce to our students as well. Engineering, we'll do the engineering design process. So designing, building, testing, rebuilding, and presenting as well. Um, arts, students love to represent themselves visually, graphically, um, with music, plays, and skits, bringing in the drama and the real connection between each other as well. And in math, between measurement, probability, logical reasoning, number sense, shapes, symmetry, there's so much that you can do um, with those things, again, across grade levels and really focusing and getting them into other subjects, especially for those kids who aren't math kids. Correct. 
And I think it's really important because many dioceses um, have spiral curriculum. So we see that, as Kayla mentioned, uh, in many opportunities. So not only are our fifth grade students learning about biomes, but first grade students are learning about animals. So there's a uni unique opportunity for, um, for the fifth grade and first grade to pair up together to, so that students can learn about the animals uh, that fall into the various biomes that they may see. Mm -hmm. And now with everything being kind of separate, they can even do that via video conferencing from one classroom to another classroom, even if they can't be face-to-face. -face. Absolutely. Right, but what can you do with your advanced students, you might ask, maybe they need to be working on something a little bit more. So you can offer extension activities to them, and you can do that in the beginning when you find that they have, through pre-assessment, mastered a concept, or if they finished early, you always have those kids and those groups who finish early and they need something else to do. So we can offer those kids extension activities to work on. I think it's really important to uh, the differentiation that the opportunity for differentiation that's offered uh, through STREAM because the students that need a little more assistance uh, can get that remediation in addition, uh, go into a deeper level of understanding of uh, a, a book that they might not have been as familiar with, or in, in contrast, something that they may have been familiar with, seeing it in a new way or a different way, um, but not only remediation, but uh, addressing the high flyers in the classroom as well. So how do we choose a book? Um, you know, it's really important first and foremost, before you introduce a, a concept to your class, to make sure that it's a book that that you as the teacher enjoy. It's something that um, that you find interesting and find unique and really can um, tell a story in a, in a new way. Um, it can be something familiar with you, for to you. For example, um, you know, Red Riding Hood um, or Jack and the Beanstalk, or it can be something totally new. I mentioned before um, pick, using picture books with older grades. It doesn't necessarily have to be a picture book. It can be a fairy tale, a nursery rhyme, a short story, or a novel. But if you're just getting into stream and introducing stream, especially into literacy, uh, sometimes we find it easier to start with the picture books because they are bright, they're colorful, uh, the, the main characters are easily identified, the themes and the events in the story are easily identifiable for students and teachers, uh, and they present a unique opportunity to begin to think about how you can integrate stream across the curriculum. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna find a focus point and you wanna build upon it. So you wanna identify what the problem of the story is. Earlier I mentioned Jack and the Beanstalk, so that might be something that you want to start with. Um, you know, if you look at Jack and the Beanstalk, what's one of the problems that Jack encounters is escaping the giant and getting back down the beanstalk. And so that might be something that you want to start with. What's your problem? You're identifying it, getting Jack from the clouds uh, and the giant world down onto uh, Earth again. You also want to take the time to identify those cross-curriculum connections. Um, so where in the science curriculum can you talk about um, you know, the building of a beanstalk or, or um, where in the math curriculum can you figure out um, the various points that you want to address during this, this concept. So make sure that you're very familiar with your curriculum, read your curriculum, and find those connections. So one book that I was not familiar with and I found very recently is called Those Shoes. Um, I read it and fell in love with it. And if you don't know this book, it's about a little boy named Jeremy and in his school, all of his friends and classmates are getting these awesome new high top shoes. And he lives with his grandma and he can't really afford it. He asks if they can get these new shoes. And she's like, no, well, you really need snow boots. Um, so Jeremy has to really understand the difference between needs and wants in this story. Um, and he learns also by the end about the joy of giving as well. So what we're gonna focus on really is the shoes. Um, we know that shoes are a necessity for people. You need to have shoes on your feet to protect your feet. And what we want to try to figure out is how can we help to provide shoes to those people in need because not everyone has access to those shoes. <clears throat> so when we're looking at that, the big thing that um, we might ask students to do is to create a pair of shoes. And 
that brings in art where they can use in their art classes to design the shoes and explore different materials that they can use to create the, the soles of the shoes and the tops of the shoes. In science, they can test those materials to see what's gonna stand up in different conditions because here in the United States and you know, North Carolina or in Virginia, um, there's different weather, but it's generally kind of, you know, warmish, cold in the winter, but some places it's very, very hot all year long. Mm -hmm. Some places there are monsoons, three seasons out of the year. And so they can go through and they can do weather tests on the different materials to see what's going to make the best shoes. Um, and also talk about the environmental impacts of the materials that they use. Where are they getting those materials? How is it going to impact that local ecosystem? Um, and going through all of that, like with technology, they can research how shoes are actually made. Like, how do you actually put them together? Um, and something, something I've never really no, thought of, I mean, actually. <laughs> um, so, and, and again, the materials. Um, with math, they can calculate the amount of materials they need, the cost of the materials, because if we're trying to get shoes to people who don't have access to them, they can't be expensive. Um, and talking about different sizes because smaller shoes are not going to need as many materials as bigger shoes. And then actually building a pair of shoes and having someone in their group wear them for a day. See if how comfortable they are um, and if they stay together. Um, so I think that's a great challenge for them. And then one of the things that we do at TFS in seventh grade is our seventh graders, um, they pair with an organization called Soul Hope that helps to make shoes for people. Um, and so this would be great to go into that service project that they work on. Or even like if you're in the younger grades and they can't really participate in an activity like that, just having a school shoe drive. Like we all, I mean, especially younger kids grow out of shoes so quickly. There are so many shoes that they could bring in and we could donate to people in need. One of the books that I was recently introduced to is called Drawing God. Uh, at my school, we had the honor of having the author of this book, Karen Kiefer, come and speak to our students via Zoom. And it was uh, fascinating to learn the history behind what drove her to write this book. So uh, in, in this book, Drawing God, Emma is the main character and Emma draws pictures and she is inspired to draw pictures of her, of what she sees God as. So she, for example, sees God as a loaf of bread. Um, and this is because her, her mom made her bread every day after school and she smells the bread and she thinks of her mom and she thinks of her safe place. And she knows that God is her safe place. And so she sees God as a loaf of bread. She sees God as the sun. And her classmates, her friends, don't see God in the way that she sees God. And finally, Emma is able to draw a picture of a big red heart and she brings it to school and she shows all of her classmates and they are able to see God in everyday things and in everyday life. And I think that with younger students, um, you know, God can become a, a, a being that's not part of our everyday life. Um, and, and we know that Christ is everywhere among us. And so it's such a beautiful story to be able to teach children to appreciate and to see God in each and everything that they do every single day. So when we talk about the science integration, we talk about Jesus is the bread of life. Um, and so we make, you can make leavened bread, you can even make unleavened bread um, and, and talk about, um, uh, the reactions and the cause between the the dough and the yeast and the rising and the heat um, and so you can bake bread together um, you can use um, a green screen as we're using today uh, to have students um, put in their vision of what they see God as, draw a picture of what God is, draw a picture of what heaven is, uh, and then have the students on the green screen explain uh, to their friends, how do they see God? How do they see heaven? And create a video, a class video um, of what is heaven. 
what do you think that heaven is? And maybe there's a writing piece um, that they, you know, the younger students might be able to write a, a sentence. The older students might be able to write a full paragraph about what they think heaven is and, and their reasoning behind it. Um, when we talk about engineering, and you can see that Kayla and I get excited about this thing, these things because it's unique and it's thinking outside of the box. They can use um, the foil to create pans to cook the, the bread that they actually bake in. Um, the pans will need to be sturdy enough to hold the bread and also even enough to prevent cracking and to keep the moisture in as well so it doesn't fall apart. Um, and it could be something that they shape it into something like a heart mm -hmm. so that it is a representative of what they think God is. That's a great idea. That's a really great idea. One of the pieces of uh, drawing God that Emma creates, what inspires her to begin to draw is a class field trip to uh, see uh, Picasso drawings. And so there's an, a unique opportunity for uh, you or your art teacher to talk about who Picasso was and introduce uh, Picasso's drawings to the students. You can even use Google Earth to take a virtual field trip um, to view some of Picasso's drawings in, in various museums around the world. Um, and then they can unique, uniquely create their own Picasso imitations about, about heaven. Um, so as you can see, we're, we're introducing you to various books, and these are just some ideas. In our presentation uh, attached, you will be able to click on the links and get these uh, ideas, as well as many, many more books. And we also provide you with uh, this template that you can create your own stream-infused literacy assignments. Charlie, um, when Charlie McButton lost power, um, this is a book by uh, Suzanne Collins, and you might know Suzanne Collins as the writer of the Hunger Games series. Um, in the in the story, um, Charlie McButton he loses uh, power in his home due to a thunderstorm, which is crazy for kids nowadays. Mm hmm. Mm hmm because everything is gone and they don't know what to do without power. <laughs> so what is he going to do without his TV? What's he going to do without his video games? How is he going to uh, make fun for himself when he's in this uh, situation? So uh, Charlie has a unique opportunity and, and you have a unique opportunity once reading this book with your, with your students to talk about uh, how power is used in our lives every single day. Um, when weather phenomena happens, uh, and, and takes out the power, how does that happen? Um, you know, you can create uh, opportunities with students using circuits mm -hmm. um, and breaking those circuits to show how electricity is uh, cut off um, during, um, during power outages and things like that. Mm -hmm. And also because there's no power, um, you can use that time to introduce your students to unplugged coding activities. <sighs> and you're thinking, what do you do with an unplugged coding activity? So basically it's logic puzzles. Um, and you'll find those that I've created um, attached as well um, with our materials. But basically it's just a grid and they have to get their character, so you can use Charlie McButton, to a specific endpoint using directions. So. You can say, well, Charlie needs to get, like collect all of these pieces to repair the electricity and get him to the end where he can fix it. Um, or they can use that and create their own for something else that you're studying or things that they're interested in as well. Absolutely. And I think it's really important um, when we're talking about religion these days, um, we talk about uh, Pope Francis's message of conservation um, and using, using and conserving the resources that God has provided us with. And so it's a great opportunity to talk with students about turning off a light when you leave a room. Um, you know, turn off the water when you're brushing your teeth uh, in between needing to use that, that little bit of water, but how much water can be wasted just by allowing the faucet to run uh, when you're brushing your teeth instead of turning it off. Uh, it's, it's, it is um, an opportunity to talk about how waste affects uh, our world and, and um, conservation of the resources that God has given us each and every day. We talk about um, creating a drawing while blindfolded in the dark. Um, you know, when you integrate art, um, you can use glow-in-the-dark ink. You can uh, take away that sense of seeing um, 
and there are many, many blind artists in the world who create incredible uh, works of art uh, without without that sense of sight. And so allowing students to create a, wor uh, create a work of art by taking away one of their senses um, would create a uni unique opportunity as well as, as you know, fun um, alternative resources like using glow in the dark uh, paint or, or things like that, or even uh, glow sticks and creating a dance piece um, with glow in the dark sticks, uh, you know, taped to the body. And you can conserve electricity at your school while you're doing it because you won't need the lights on. <laughs> so that's, that's true. Um, you can also create a complete uh, cost analysis of the different types of alternative power sources. Um, so you can, again, take a virtual field trip to look at a wind farm uh, and to see how those resources are, are used each and every day. And then talk about, um, you know, how students can um, conserve resources and if they use uh, alternative resources like biking versus using gas, um, how, how much money could they save? And that's how you can integrate the math into it. So when we talk about stream, um, you know, these things obviously riding a bike as compared to driving a car is not specifically mentioned in when uh, Charlie McButton lost power, but Kayla and I are taking a lot of um, you know, basic concepts and really just building upon them based on the various grade levels and the various uh, curriculum topics that we've talked about. So using your um, brain to really stretch and to think outside the box for how to integrate unique projects is really the fun part of uh, integrating uh, stream into literacy assignments. All right, so the last one that we're gonna talk about um, in depth today is Goldie Rocks and the Three Bears. And this was one of my children's favorite books growing up and my husband used to read it to them all the time. Um, and so it's just kind of a play on that Goldilocks uh, fairy tale that we all know, um, but they're in a band. So she's not running around like sitting on their stuff and eating their food and hiding from them. Um, they're friends and they're looking for a new member for their band with a unique instrument. Um, and they do auditions and stuff and it's really kind of fun. And so what kind of instrument would you make? Could you make, hmm. right? Um, what's it gonna look like? What's it gonna sound like? This goes great with those like vibrations and waves and those kinds of science topics. And we talk about sound waves and wavelengths and tone, which again is music as well. We can bring those arts in, right? Um, and even in just regular art class, if we're looking at music and we're trying to figure out what our instrument might be like, draw the blueprints. What is it gonna look like? What are those different shapes and materials make the sound sound like? Um, technology, there's a really great website um, from the Dallas Symphony Orchestra for kids and you can go in and you can listen to the different instruments and you can really get ideas for, you can see the instruments and the shapes that they are made in and like how, like the size, are they hollow, are they not hollow? Um, do you have to blow wind into them? Do you do strings? So they can really explore that website to find some different ideas. Um, I think with, with the younger students, um, even if they're not familiar with a lot of instruments, um, this is an opportunity where you can bring in uh, shapes with mm -hmm. kindergarten or even pre-K. Uh, bring in shapes and look at uh, various shapes and look at symmetry. Um, you know, if you have a circle-shaped instrument, can you, can you break it down the middle and fold it in half and see if those two sides are symmetrical? You can talk about um, you know, the sound inside of various instruments. You can even pull, uh, you know, make a little um, guitar out of a Kleenex box and a, and a paper towel roll. Um, things that, that we may have done when we were younger, um, not even thinking that we were, that we were learning, but it's really um, unique uh, for students to be able to take uh, a lot of recycled uh, materials that you just collect over a small period of time and dump them on a table and tell the students create an instrument um, the things that they'll come up with and the names that they'll come up with for those <laughs> instruments are really unique and fun <laughs> yeah and once you've done that you can pull your religion in um, so for example like figure out what you're talking about in religion and have your students 
using those instruments, create a song for you um, to kind of reinforce those concepts as well. Absolutely. It's really, um, it, it's, it, it could be a lot of fun to have students be able to think outside the box and have students be able to not only just create something for science class or for math class or even for art class, but then to bring the religion piece into it and allow them to actually discuss uh, the seasons. Um, you know, is it joyful? Um, right now in recording this, we're in the season of Lent. Uh, so it's a very somber time. Uh, what kind of music would they create that would match the tone of the uh, church liturgical calendar? And so um, really allowing students to to explore their creativity. And this is something that when we talk about synchronous learning and asynchronous learning, this is something that can be done on an asynchronous day. Um, you know, having students use things from their home to create an instrument so the next time that they're in school or the next time you're in Google Meet or on Zoom or Skype or whatever uh, tool you're using, all the students can bring those pieces together. You also can have them uh, through your learning management system record their own uh, sound and then you can piece all those together using something like GarageBand uh, and overlay them together to create a, a school sound. So it's not something that students necessarily have to be in class to be doing. This is something that can be done uh, virtually as well. I know that uh, my teachers struggle each and every day to think how can they engage those students who are at home and it's so, so important to keep them in it as excited as when they're in school learning. And so it's it's coming up with ideas that thinking outside the box that, that allows mm -hmm. our students to really explore their creativity and show what they know and what they've learned. Rating the recycling bin. Always All the important. time. <laughs> All the time. My kids raid the recycling bin and... I raid the recycling bin to bring it to school so the other kids can use the recycling. Um, so that's that's a great way for them to have, I mean, it's found materials, so they don't have to go out and buy things. As I mentioned before, uh, we're <clears throat> providing you all with a template uh, to be able to create a copy. Um, you can copy this presentation. All you have to do is go to file and make a copy and uh, this will be a copy of your own presentation that you can explore together. One of the things I want to uh, discuss with you is we mentioned that we have a lot of books. Um, Kayla and I have been doing this a long time and we have a lot of books that, that we have uh, explored. And so when we talk about it in the presentation, um, there are more unit examples. And so I wanna take a look at that very quickly so that we can uh, show you exactly what we've been talking about. So we talk, and here is Goldie Rocks and the Three Bears um, by Corey Rosen Schwartz. And we give you the concepts uh, in the subject area. Um, and we mentioned the problem, and you can see the problem up in here. Uh, the band is looking for a new member with a unique instrument to play. So we talked about uh, beginning with stream infused literacy, we talked about identifying that problem. So here's one of the problems. It doesn't have to be a set problem in the right. book. It can be whatever you deem uh, appropriate and whatever you want to build your unit around uh, the problem. We also have linked many, many resources in here. So feel free to go through this document and to take a look at it. One of the other books, uh, Goldilocks has chicken pox. So you also can use a compare and contrast for various types of uh, books with the common theme Goldilocks, yeah, yeah, common character, uh, something that you might see. Um, I love the book, There's an Animal Strike at the Zoo, It's True, um, and that's by Karma Wilson. Um, also, that is that is not necessarily a, a, a simple picture book. That's a more hefty book that you can use with um, older or younger students, again, mm -hmm. but something that when you talk about wanting to uh, use um, something more, a little more con uh, complex in uh, topics um, that really uh, is, a, is a great book to use. We also have included classic books like The Lorax um, from Dr. Seuss. Um, that is something that students are very familiar with. Also a great opportunity just in literacy for a compare and contrast between the book and the movie. There's the old school movie and the newer movie. Um, and you talk about a great opportunity for bringing in um, Catholic social teaching principles in care for creation. That's a, a great one. Um, and so um, 
And we also pull not just the the picture books and those kinds of things, but there are some novels as well and some fairy tale tales that we have gone through for you. Absolutely. Um, one of the one of the higher level uh, thinking for if you're working with um, more advanced students or students that are ready to conquer. Um, those higher level reading uh, comprehension books. Um, we, we have um, identified um, The Wizard of Oz um, by L. Frank Baum, a classic book. Many people are familiar with the movie. The book is a little, a little bit different, um, but it is a great opportunity to bring in science when you're talking about tornadoes and researching. Um, also talking about religion, about how weather can affect uh, the loss of of home and the loss of resources and possessions um, and how uh, opportunities and unique um, groups like um, Catholic Parish Outreach or um, the Red Cross uses the, the resources that they have to reach out and help um, families that are in need of assistance. So we encourage you to take a, the, uh, the opportunity to look through all of our resources that we've provided to you. And we also want to encourage you that if you have uh, any questions to always reach out to us. We're gonna in a minute provide you with uh, our email addresses. And again, you feel free to uh, reach out to us at any time. So a couple of the resources that we kind of like, especially if um, you want to make that read aloud a little bit more fun, um, the Novel Effect app actually provides you a soundtrack. And so as you're reading, it gives you sound effects in the background. Um, so your students will definitely love hearing those. It's also really great for them if they're reading it aloud because it kind of listens for specific words to say to do the sound effects. And so if they're reading correctly, it kind of, it, it makes sure that they're going through and um, they're learning those words. Mm -hmm. The fluency, it yes. helps with fluency as well, reading out loud. And um, another resource we want to show you is uh, Storyline Outline, uh, Storyline Online. And so um, these are some of our favorite celebrities reading uh, classic books. Um, and, and new books. And new books and too new that books. we've not heard of. Um, and so it's a, it's a fun opportunity to hear some favorites, um, favorite celebrities as yeah. well. Kids get kind of tired of hearing us read sometimes. Never me. Sometimes. Um, and the last one we have on our list is voice recorder. And you can get some kind of audio recorder on any device that you have so that you can read the stories ahead of time and students can um, either press play or scan a QR code and they can sit with the books themselves and follow along as you read it. Or you can have your higher students read books and do the same exact thing. So you can pull all of those things and, in. And something unique uh, that happens at my school is um, we have our eighth grade teacher and just because uh, the students are in eighth grade don't mean that, doesn't mean that they don't love to hear somebody read to them as well. And so That's our true. teacher, she uh, records herself reading the novel and, and assigns it to students and they plug in their headphones um, and just listen to a read. Uh, it also would be a great opportunity for the older kids to read stories and record it to the younger mm -hmm. kids uh, to, to give them. And also they can, you know, use that opportunity to, uh, you know, use any kind of voice recorder to uh, talk to the students about what they found important and even use that opportunity to bring in um, Catholic social teaching principles or identify uh, the faith in the novels or the books that they read as well and talk to the students about it because again as Kayla mentioned sometimes they might get sick of us here of hearing us but uh, they never get tired of older students um, giving them attention and um, and support and so again we want to thank you for joining us for stream infused literacy my name again is Stephanie Horgan uh, here is my contact information and Kayla. My contact information is right next to hers. <laughs> Feel free to contact us uh, at any point and we thank you for your time today. God bless.